love that song. And somewhat appropriate, it being the Hockey Night in Canada theme, this being Canada Day, the anniversary of the birth of my home country and the home place of the greatest sport in the world. Welcome back to the other state of hockey. We, uh, I got to ask you. Yes, sir. Are you guys, when you say Canada Day, does that mean like when the British kind of left or the French kind of, like who kind of left to make it Canada? Is there, uh, or was it was it just like a peaceful thing? Like it a, was, no, it was a peaceful thing. It was owned by, uh, guys. Uh, well, no, not always. War of 1812. We can talk about that oh, after okay. when we, we burned down the White House. <laughs> um, anyways, it was the Declaration of Independence, well, kind of Declaration of Independence, the BNA Act when Britain said, okay, guys, you got this, you're done. And that, that's when it became legally official. Okay. So that's when the like divorce. You clean on money and stuff too, don't you? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just, a, that's just like a token. Like, hey, yeah. yo, you were still kind of cool. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. You're still my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Hey, in case we need somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In case a bar fight breaks out, someone got our back. You have a pretty good Navy over there. <laughs> that's right. We have three rowboats <laughs> and a potato gun. So anyways, Derek Hander on this side of the mic, my brother Frankie Mink on the other side. Big day in hockey. This, besides being Canada Day and, of course, our show day, uh, it is Free Agent Frenzy Day, mm -hmm. and a lot of stuff to talk about. Who said? Who thought in the middle of start of July we would have probably three hours worth of material to talk about today? You say it all the time. There is no off season. There is none. There is none. We're probably busier today than we are uh, a month and a half ago. Yeah, you know, I believe. Yeah, but I believe anyways, a couple of things I want to get to real quick. Good. Uh, local boy, Scotty Clemenson. We talked about him before as he was uh, the first, well, arguably the first uh, Iowa-born uh, yep. professional hockey player. It was that, announced yesterday by the New Jersey Devils, the team that drafted him and the team that he played the majority of his career with, that he will be joining the front office as the goaltender development coach. So he is essentially taking his retirement and he is jumping right into the front office. So good for Clem. Oh, I wish he would have came and played for the for the Wild. Yeah, I would like to have seen just that too. Or something, just to mess around. Yeah, I would like to have seen that. But a couple blocks here, there. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie makes. He'll actually, probably, he'll actually probably lose money coming here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So uh, and actually f discovered that uh, the boy we've been talking a lot about, yes. Chad Costello. Yes. Um, discovered that. His brother plays on my beer league hockey team. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't either. We're in a locker I mean, room. We've just, been talking about him for, I know, forever. Forever. And uh, just trying to get a connection. And then I was just talking to the guy in the room and told him, you know, that we do this show. And he, uh, he says, yeah, my, well, you know, I think my brother might be able to come out and play with us next week. Oh, who is he? He's like, oh, he played in the American League. And East Coast says, you Chad's brother? And he said, yeah. Say, like, hey, look, I don't want him to play. I just want him on my show. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Play. I don't That's, care. I, don't I want him on my show. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a connection. Unfortunately, he's, anyway. he is in Mexico this week. So we will. Playing hockey? I got my doubts. Yeah. I got my doubts. Um, so hopefully he'll be here on the show in, over the summer okay. as his schedule allows and as ours allows as well. Right. So uh, looking forward to that. So there is no off season. There is no off season. He says that every show. I do that. I say that a lot. I say that a lot. <laughs> So, and you're right, though, because this week is absolutely crazy. Oh, this is nuts. This is nuts. I mean, today alone, I spent the majority of the day in front of my iPad, my phone, uh, Channel 250. What different from Monday, Thursday? So. <laughs> uh, I had a good reason. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's all well, the best reason I have. Right, right. Just research. Just, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's show research. You know, it's make us sound more credible and actually yeah, we have a clue what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, uh Anyways, we had a couple of big things going on. Draft, don't really want to waste much time talking about draft. It pretty much rolled as, as we thought it would. One and two fell as we thought they would. Mm -hmm. No questions about that. And a few jockeys around, but, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot going on there that we needed to really talk about. One interesting note, the first Chinese-born player was that taken was by cool. the Rangers. They're calling him the Yao Ming of hockey. I don't know about that. I don't know how What's tall the size? Is. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. I'm wondering if he was with the team that was here in town when the Chinese national team came through hmm. a while ago. I'll need to look that up. Andong Sung is his name. Song? Andong. A-N-D-O-N-G. Wait until he plays in Philly. There's going to be some signs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be some signs for him. Yep, yep, yep. There'll be lots of signs. Yeah. So I got to look this guy up and see if he actually did play with that team or not. But uh, uh, the NHL awards, we'll just breeze through this real quick, and we'll get to, I know what you're trying, what you're burning to talk about, so... Uh, NHL awards. Just want to do it for yeah. the sake of giving my uh, my boy a, a, a shout out. Carrie Price. Uh, I thought you were talking about me. 
Sorry, my other boy. Yeah. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, at least in the uh, great city of Montreal. He won the heart, the Vesna. He shared the Jennings with uh, Corey Crawford, or Crawford, as I've been calling him. Mm-hmm. And that is based on their goals allowed total. They ended up with the exact number of goals allowed, 189 each. Just in this. No, that doesn't Just in the season. season. Nope. Just the regular season. Crazy thing was that uh, Crawford's uh, goals against was almost a half point higher. Hmm. So it was, was over two, and Craw- uh, I think uh, Price was one seven or one eight or something like that. So um, he also uh, took the uh, Ted Lindsay, which is the MVP voted by the players. I wonder why he give it. A, a, what, how come is it Ted Lindsay? He's still around, right? Yeah, he, actually, he presented the award, from what I understand. How does, it, how does that happen? Though? How do you get a, yeah. throw like a dead dude? I, uh, I would be like, yo, am I going to die? Why am I, why are you making an award about me? <laughs> hey, we named an award. Really? Bro, yeah. You hear something from the doc I didn't? Yeah, yeah. 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 My wife tell you something? <laughs> so uh, that was the biggest thing. Uh, Carlson, friend of the our Des Moines Junior Bucks, mm-hmm. uh, did win the Norse, which uh, really I don't think you can say much about. Uh, Hoodler, who's a Norse, beauty. and that's uh, Best defense. defenseman. Yep. And uh, only other one really that stood out. I, th- I liked uh, Hartley. How many times has Webb won that, you think? Or should have. Should have. He should be a perennial, honestly. He's yeah. there all the time. Yeah. Um, Bob Hartley winning the Jack Adams Award for Best Coach of the Year. I okay. think the biggest case he made for himself was the push down to playoffs when they had everybody hurt. Jared Allen was hurt. Yep. They lost everybody. And he still figured out a way to get these guys playing at a high level. Pushed, and he made it to the second round with a team that shouldn't have made the first round. Right. I'm with you. And pushed Anaheim as hard as they probably got pushed until they got eliminated. So, yeah. No, and then you're absolutely. And that was. Uh, so, okay. So, wait, what's the rookie of the year? Rookie of the year was the Calder. Calder, yeah. Calder. And that Ekblad from Florida won that, which, you know, you might as well be playing for a team in Mexico and play in Florida. Uh, Luongo. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, he's the only guy who's happy to be there. Well, probably, it's really sad is when you watch them in games. You know, that's sad when you see yeah. like nobody in the crowd. And I know. I know. remember last year when they uh, lost a pane of glass. They replaced it with a what looked like a sheet of plywood. It was the plexi without the plastic torn off, and they just had people move. It was that few people in the stadium. I was at uh, an Atlanta game their last season. Mm-hmm. Rashers. One of the w- uh, women from. Uh, the housewives of New York or one of the really troublemaker ones was trying to date one of the guys on the team and I was sitting that, like next to her. Uh-huh. And I just remember I was just, I mean, it's such a nice rink. At that Atlanta. I mean, just the, the boards and the yep. light ups and the, oh, yep. I mean, and... Uh, remember and, the uh, the logo with the flames that shoots out yeah, over the yeah, scoreboard? Yeah. I mean, it was, I, it just was sad. I mean, I, I can't, you know, can't take it. When Should, I well, yeah, I mean, I, an NHL team. And, Should there have been a team there? It failed been, right, before. Right. Failed again. You yeah. know. Now, now we're going to Vegas. Well, I got a section. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyways, uh, you want to give a quick breakdown of uh, Nationals? How yeah. On time. Yeah, yeah. Loads of time. So uh, we took uh, the Des Moines Explosion, our uh, travel roller team. We have uh, two 12U teams, two 10U teams, and one uh, big 8U team. Well, our 12U teams didn't fare so well. Uh, I think we got duped a little bit. Uh, we put our top team in uh, AAA. I think we should have went double A. Uh, the people at the arena said, oh, your team will match up great with our teams here in Colorado. <laughs> I.e., we're sandbagging for a, tur- for yep. a, a trophy. Uh, whoop us. I mean, we were, they were waiting for us to walk with yep. the buzzsaw. Yep. And we did. And we went, okay, we'll go world. And we have... Uh, and. and uh, we just have too many players that are not AAA. I don't want to talk about, you know, we just don't have them. Yeah. We have one line that's AAA, and then we have the other lines. Oh, consider the size of the program. Yeah, yeah. And right. And so uh, that didn't go well. But we uh, played our butts off, and uh, we won the our last game against Kansas City, which is so funny because we play Kansas City yeah. all the yeah. time you in our region. You drove, what, four hours past Kansas City right. to get there, yeah. Even more than that. So it was yeah. great. So anyway, we, we beat them in the last game to end on a good note. Uh, but our 10U team... Got put into AAA, and we won nationals again. Nice. So, repeat. And then our B team got put into single A and 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 did it did it too i'm i'm shocked you didn't bring hardware this time and you know well they don't we only give they only give one extra one that goes to the ring oh okay so anyway the last one was we had our 8u team uh, first day of seeding we're playing all of our seeding games kids are playing phenomenal passing perfectly uh we get put in the in the best bracket lose 
the whole next two two days. Just lose, lose, nice. get killed, right? So we have a <laughs> must win game against a really tough team just to, just to make it even into the playoff round. We win like four to three or something. Go on to go play to go to the gold medal. We lose that. Go put back into the bronze game, and we play the team that whooped us the first time. Like this team called the Avengers from uh, Akron. No, from uh, Littleton, Colorado. Uh, so anyway, they come in and they whooped us bad the first game, and they come in with this attitude and our eight U's. We, I think it was just all coaching, really. I mean, because we had them oh, prepared. Of course, them. absolutely, of course, of course. They, they had them going, but. Uh, Beat them 4-2 for the bronze. Attaboy. And so it was just an amazing game. And uh, uh, we have a couple of ma- – we have three players that won MVP nice. of the tournaments. And then we've th- – two of our goalies won uh, MVG. So. What is it we always used to tell our boys last winter about confidence? Mm-hmm. It's the most dangerous thing when it's misplaced. Mm-hmm. So nothing more than a team that's coming in looking past the team they're about to play. Yeah. And I, and I think our 12 U's, if we would have got put in the right brackets or the brackets that might have been suitable for us. But you know what? We played the best, and, and that's what happens. You know, we, we played the best. The kids learned. I will tell you about uh, my, my son p- plays on the 12 U team, and he's kind of like our, one of our all-stars, you know. Well, we were getting killed 6-1 to one and the end of the last period, and it's about five minutes left, and I noticed he was easing up on back-checking, which my, you know my son. He yeah, loves the yeah, back-checking. Yeah, yeah. It's like his thing, you know. And so he came off, and I benched him. I didn't put him back in the rest of the game. And at the end of the game, because I always separate dad and coach. Mm-hmm. I have to. You have to. When, I, when I'm coaching, I call him Mink. I don't even call him Anthony. I call him by his last name. Like, it's just yep. a, a turn it on. A mink, it's just how I call him. Well, I uh, pulled him to the side, and, I, and, and this might be a little harsh, but I said, as your dad and your coach, because I never combined the two, if I ever see you quit on a team, I don't care if it's 25 to nothing. If I ever see you quit on a team, I will never coach you again in hockey. He cried. <laughs> he cried. He was like, "That's pretty harsh, Dad." And I was like, "Well, I never want to see you give up again." It was, you know, not you. And um, and he was just like, oh, "I was just tired or whatever." So I just said, "Well, I see. I've never seen you give up on something before, and yep. you did." So uh, the next two games on fire. Yeah, yeah. Hatch. He's the type of kid who takes that stuff and puts it in the right place in his mm-hmm. head. He definitely oh, yeah. does. He definitely does. Oh, you know, well, we've been kicked out of the room so he can address the team before. He has done it. He's you know? the youngest kid, too. Yep. He kicks the coaches out and says, I want to have a player who's only me. And, yep. he's, and he's been doing that since he was – Bobby Ryan taught him that. So. Yep. But – Yeah. So, anyway, my son got drafted now to go play for St. Louis. Um, St. Louis – one of their – St. Louis Blast. Okay. So, they get picked him. He's gonna, they're going to take him to Florida. It's all roller hockey. He plays roller and ice, but – um, diversifies. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> he, he plays two sports, roller yeah. and ice. <laughs> um, that's Bobby Ryan's old team. Nice. So he's so pumped. He's just. Is he going to wear his number? I yeah, still wear it. Yeah, he wears Bobby's number. No, is he going to wear it on the St. Louis team? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah, because well, he gets to keep his number from explosions. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it was good news. You've been kind of busy. Yeah. Well, in case you're wondering why I have this lovely singing voice today. Yeah, let's hear it. <clears throat> Last week, uh, I did my first week with uh, Canadian professional goalie. A Canadian professional hockey school mm-hmm. uh, with our clinic in Coralville and uh, don't have a whole lot of voice left because of uh, trying to keep the intensity going with the boys and, and I a mean, few girls. I mean, you some older boys. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. Had a, we had a fair mix of talent and skill and at age. We had boys and girls and we had uh, some higher levels, some still younger kids, but uh, kept it going. Boys had a lot of fun. My boys did it. Had a blast. Had a blast. I mean, literally, they, we get up at six o'clock in the morning to drive over. And where was uh, this at now? By the Coralville. Way. Oh, okay. Right there in the food court. You know where it is. Yeah. Oh, I know where it is. And uh, you can always tell us for lunch. But uh, <laughs> anyways, we'd uh, we drive over. The boys would sleep all the way over. They would go hard all day. Did their dry land hard all day. Uh, Dylan won player of the day one day while we were there, and uh, they came home and be out in the backyard shooting pucks again. Yeah, I seen the picture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was awesome. So yeah. I mean, Jason's a great little hockey player, especially D. He's oh, good. Yeah, yeah. But Dylan, sometimes I see some special. Sometimes I see the way he yeah. turns that on, and uh, our 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 two boys have played together, and yep. that that line has been pretty dominant. Sometimes even house league travel, all that stuff. So, um, but it's one of those things. Where I, I see that intensity, mm-hmm. and I see there's. Because uh, I think they're small, so a lot of guys put bodies on them, and uh-huh. it's going to stop them. But it, you know, yeah. Well, and as we've talked about before, it's find the right place for kids to succeed. Honestly, mm-hmm. so you know, 
But um, anyways, then I mean, triple A in Colorado is not the right way to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you fell. I got duped. One. Yep, yep, yep. Cheated. Uh, then uh, last weekend went to uh, Minnesota for a triple A tournament with my boys. O two and O three storm, and uh, the O threes took second place. Okay. First bit of hardware that the franchise has won. And the O threes uh, took third place. Nice. So. Wait, O twos took first. O twos second. took second. Or sorry, O threes took second. O twos took third. So the O three beat the O twos. Well, not the well, same not, age. Not, but they finished higher. Yeah. Yeah. So first bit of hardware for a first year team. That's not bad. That's, That's not, not bad, bad at, at all. all. Looks like we got to go to break, pay some bills. We'll have on special, Canada Day. On Canada Day, so we're paying him in Canadian money. And uh, Maddie, you're getting paid in Canadian money today too. By the way, just for to let you know, it's it's easy to tell because uh, all the different colors. Anyways, uh, go pay some bills. Maddie will be back with a special guest after this. The Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John, And we're back. As promised, we have a special guest. Uh, we have Dr. Gary Bowman, mm -hmm. and I will refer to him. That will probably be the only time I refer to him in that in such a manner. Uh, <laughs> but just, I think it's going to be interesting for our listeners. Yes, I mean, yes. This this is actually, this is a very interesting uh, guest. I'd love to have him on every so often, actually, because uh, there's a lot of good stuff he can offer us. Just kind of give you a little bit of background about Gary. Uh, he's got a bachelor's degree in wellness and, and health science from SUNY. He's got a master's in rehab and sports science. You finished that finally, right? Got it. Atta boy, atta boy. He's certified strength and conditioning coach. He is the strength and conditioning for, coach for the Iowa Wild. Uh, he is also a, a chiropractor in his spare time. Uh, he does a lot of sports and conditioning with young athletes. He has uh, his own uh, sports conditioning program that he does uh, twice a week with uh, young athletes and older athletes. Uh, knows a lot about hockey. He has played it. He played four years of uh, varsity with SUNY and also played a little bit of minor pro. 
Kept so, it going as long as I could. Yeah. <laughs> so without further ado, we introduce Dr. Gary Bowman. Wow. I appreciate it, fellas. Hey, hey, hey. Canada Day. Not uh, Canada Day. So wait, you did play uh, some pro? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, uh, I was fortunate enough actually to play during the lockout. Um, you know, like when your NCAA season ends, uh, bottom of the barrel teams looking for some guys to come in. And mm -hmm. I was one of the guys that was able to play six, nine games. During Where'd you play? Uh, Elmira. Okay. Elmira yeah. Jackals. Yep. Six yeah. games, actually, according to Hockey DB. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I would drive down on Wednesday, practice with the team one night, play three games, go back to school. A little bit of money in my pocket to share yeah. with the boys and do it again the next week. <laughs> so it was all right. Yeah. So uh, Gary's the full... The full meal deal here as far as uh, all things wellness with hockey. As far as he's got that medical background, he's got the training background. He's, so he understands nutrition. He understands the game. He actually uh, has been a, been a player. I've coached with him last year. Looking forward to spending a little bit of time with him again this year. Do you still play at all, men's league, anything like that? I did when I first moved here. When I was living in Chicago, I played all the time. Uh, when I moved here, it was just a little bit more challenging, like, uh, you know, 11 o'clock start or something on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a little bit more challenging. Got two kids now, so. Right, right. Doing the. Uh, so you married all that stuff. Yeah. You married an Iowa girl or? No, what? New York girl. New yeah, me yeah. too. Drug her out here, yeah, kicking yeah. and screaming. Yeah. yeah. She <laughs> drug me here. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So uh, Gary works out at Active Wellness. It's a uh, chiropractic clinic out in Johnston. Yeah. And uh, I know that actually we were talking off air. He's. Uh, he has been uh, working out with uh, several of uh, the players that myself and Frank have both coached mm -hmm. uh, at various levels, uh, which is good to see. Yeah, and uh, you can fix what I what I broke. <laughs> <laughs> a lot broke with you, Frank. Yeah, I know. So he can make a career off of that. <laughs> one of the uh, dads, just real quick, I was had that voice like you did, and I was coaching. And I couldn't yep. yell, and one of the dads came over and he's like, "Frank, if you just tell me what you want me to say," and it was a really chippy game. Dad goes, "I'll just yell it out," and I'm sorry to take. This conversation but it's no he's he right. goes uh he goes you just tell me what to say and and i'll get this right and i said all i need you to say is clear the benches boys <laughs> <laughs> and he so, and he backed away <laughs> so gary what kind of injuries are you seeing mostly with young athletes the surprising kind of stuff the, yeah. you know, that you would not typically see and i know with with goaltenders specifically with, uh, i'd like to talk about at some point you're probably, probably seeing a lot more hip injuries mm -hmm. than you yeah. would just because of the change in style. So a lot of but you can kind of give us a rundown as far as what you're seeing mostly lately and uh, uh, how you're treating that and what kind of recovery you're seeing out of that. Sure. You know, just like with you guys, you know, we talk about 12U and 14U. I mean, those terms are applicable for, for injuries as well. You know, we don't see a lot of the kids being symptomatic from overuse at that that 12 year. 12 year old group, but those are the kids that, you know, run into the boards or have an ankle tweak or something. That's mostly the trauma stuff that we see. It's not until they're like 14 or so that we start to see those repetitive hockey injuries. Let's talk about a, a goaltender who's strictly a, a butterfly goalie, mm -hmm. um, always crashing down, really turning his hips in. And then in the summer, if he's training that way, again, there's no off season and the joints need an off season just as much as maybe the mind doesn't. Sometimes the joints definitely need an off season. Mm -hmm. So that's about the age where we start to see these actually structural changes happening. And they do the research on this stuff. There's a group out of Colorado where they took a group of 12 year olds, started to look at their hips, followed them to their 18. I think the percentage is shocking. Like 98% of these kids had some structural changes in their hips wow. and that's due to sport. That's due to the way we coach them off ice, you know, so on and so forth. So in, you know, to get right to it. I mean, through all ages, it's definitely hips and shoulders, but that overuse stuff really starts to kick in in these 14 year old kids and, and up. Well, actually, one of the kids I was working with, I'll call him a kid because he's 19, uh, was working the, uh, go, the hockey school with me last week, 19 years old, just recovering from arthroscopic hip surgery. Hey, uh, does it matter, boys or girls? Because I know the hips are kind of a different thing, you know, for mm -hmm. females. Do you see more males having these hip issues? Or? Yeah, it definitely. I think in, uh, you know, and I guess there's no research to necessarily quote me on this, but, you know, the difference with male and female, yeah, That's is it. that, uh, you know, there's there's these different types of injuries, and, and females are more predisposed to knee-type injuries. Okay. While they can definitely have their, their hip injuries, mm -hmm. if there's a, a common female injury, it's typically a knee problem. Knee. But the therapy is on the hip, but it's the knee that's kind of, that's hurt, hmm. you know? So a lot of theirs is landing mechanics. They land 
very quad dominant because females go through puberty a little faster so they develop a muscle group a little bit earlier than guys do so it's when they land or or so on and so forth in these dry land training drills that they're actually more susceptible to like a knee injury than some of our and actually our i remember you actually talking about being quad dominant I remember actually seeing about girls being more prone to knee dislocation and patellar dislocation because there's so much more uh, muscle on the outside of the knee that it tends to pull the kneecap out to the outside. So right. Especially when you look at that torsion that you're putting on that joint. Because you're, I mean, really with goaltending especially, you're putting those joints through a range of motion under strain that is not meant to have. Yeah. Right. Not meant to have. I mean, I just a couple of weeks ago I was playing and I just, I went down and I was in a butter and I had it, it made me like kind of push me over like my hip. Kind of went a little bit, you know, man. It was it was like a shocking pain, and it made me go one way. But one of our younger goalies just had the same thing happen to him. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, yeah, you know, you know, Joe. So yeah, yeah. He had it. So um, if you kind of break down as far as any advice that you give to younger players, we'll start off like a ten U group, then maybe a fourteen U group, and then maybe high school U group. Um, any kind of advice you give them for basics on what kind of stuff they should be doing by the time of year. Uh, as far as what type of training they should be doing, uh, what they should be focused on, nutrition, things like that. Yeah, that, that's a, a big and great question. I think, you know, I really like the USA Hockey model, that developmental model they've taken with encouraging young athletes to play multiple sports. And that's easy to say, but you guys coach, you know how hard it is <coughs> as a parent to mm -hmm. encourage that when one kid is playing hockey all year and maybe he's getting the travel team exposure. So as much as I like to say that, I think the, the better question is in that uh, – being a little bit more uh, of a stickler on on form and i don't expect all parents to know that but that's the problem with a, a group training of let's say 18 to 20 kids in one session is the attention to detail isn't there so i would say any parent who is 10 or, or 12 year well has a kid that's 10 or 12 years old i would say try to avoid the big group training classes um, because that's a time when you want these young athletes to really learn the the skills of, of weightlifting not necessarily you know putting weight on their backs mm -hmm. but just like we want them to learn the skills of learning for check and skating and the basics, those are the ages to really hammer down the basics. So learn how to squat, learn how to land from a jump, learn how to utilize your abs before you, you train. Because when they get to me, they're 18 years old, they don't know that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's wasted days in the gym with me, yeah. you know, not to be overly arrogant, but I mean, if you're going to pay to spend time with me, I got to teach you the stuff I'm teaching a 12 year old, you know, we could be doing bigger and better things, but it's a fundamental pattern that has to be there. So we Building just block. can't skip it. Yeah, absolutely. So we take small groups, you know, we start start at, at 14. Like, uh, I have a couple 13 year old guys that, you know, I, I'd say, and maybe interview them to make sure that they have the, the ability to train hard, but I don't really work with guys that are too young in my facility because we're really trying to, you know, help guys make the leap to maybe a triple A team or go to juniors and, and stuff like that. I don't have the floor space, nor do I have the time to take on a group of 18. So I take a small group, um, and, and work with them a lot more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but by the time you're 14, 15, 16, it's time to start maybe building some meat, you know, start to lift some weights a little mm -hmm. bit, but with the same foundational or fundamental cues of good squat form and all that other stuff. So I would say 14, you know, doing some some simple, not barbell squat, but like dumbbell type stuff. Um, 15, 16, start to load it up more. 16-year-old girl, she should be training hard. She's got the hormone levels and stuff like that to really be going hard. 16-year-old boy, some of them do, some of them don't. Mm -hmm. We joke around with some of our guys. You know, you got armpit hair. Yes, all right, let's go hard. If not, you know, maybe next year. <laughs> you got wings we'll under there. You know, you got the wings. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there is that hormonal component to it. We need the guys to be ready. Um, I got a few junior guys in there now that, you know, they're looking to, you know, one guy's going D1, one guy's looking to make the jump. I mean, they get in, they're going hard for an hour. You know, there's not a lot of cueing other than what they need to work on, but it's more of putting the, white, the right weight on their body to get, you know, the outcomes. A lot of them have a bench press test when they get to camp or a pull-up test or something, so I keep that in mind. But we believe in just getting our guys stronger. You know, strength kind of cures all, in, in our opinion. From a nutrition perspective, holy smokes, that's a, that's a tough one. Young kids are under... Um, undernourished sometimes, you know, just because they're smaller doesn't mean they require any less calories per se. You know, their bodies are growing. So, you know, you definitely want to keep them well served from a, from a diet perspective. Balance is huge. We like to talk about um, using your own body, body parts as serving size. So we tell everyone that the size of the palm of your hand is about the size of a, a protein serving, including the thickness. Mm -hmm. You know, the size of your fist is a good vegetable size serving. You know, a, a cupped hand, you know, is like mm -hmm. fruit and starch. 
And then about the length of your thumb would be, you know, nuts. And then based on your body type, maybe you get two servings of each one of those. Or if you're a bigger kid, maybe you get, you know, a little less carbohydrate, a little more something else. But trying to just give them something sustainable so they're not counting calories or measuring their foods, things that they can't do or and parents I can't do. I noticed you didn't say there was a McDonald's. Like you know, my arms, yeah, yeah. McDonald's. Uh, yeah, the McDonald's you know, metrics is not haven't haven't come up with that one yet. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine the dimensions of it though. So, um, any common mistakes you see in, as far as training, as far as false assumptions, as far as training? I mean, I always try to tell my players, and especially my goalies, it's a matter of endurance, cur- uh, in, endurance, flexibility, and strength. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of finding that right chemistry that, you know, you know, some guys will go too hard, especially older, will focus more on just throwing weight around and, you know, have the have flexibility of an 80-year-old man. Uh, so, I don't know, anything you, want, anything you can throw on on that would be great. Yeah, I think some general philosophies that are maybe common mistakes are that, um, you know, over-speed training translates to sport. And it, unfortunately, it'd be great if it was, but some of my kids who fly through the ladder – are not necessarily the fastest kids on the ice. You know what I mean? Coordination can kind of carry over, but, you know, we got a couple of guys that we do ladder drills. I mean, they are smoking hot with their feet going through there, but you put them on a, you know, a blue line to blue line drill with another guy, they're, mm-hmm. they're not going to blow them, blow them out of the water. So I think overemphasizing the overspeed stuff just doesn't translate well to the ice. Um, the Russians are the ones who really kind of coined plyometric stuff. Um, but for them, it was all about, like falling off the box and jumping back up, not just jumping up on stuff for the sake of jumping. It's that rebound effect Recovery. that we want. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of a misunderstood aspect of plyometrics. Because when do you hurt yourself? When you're caught off, but hit off balance, knocked off balance, land funny. Right. And that's with our guys, like uh, with the wild, you know, um, if they're, you know, not necessarily out of the lineup due to a healthy scratch, but like they're injured. That's one thing that they don't get the chance to do much of is exploding. You know, they're not out there on the ice and game speed while they might be doing a rehab skate. They don't get the chance to blow it up like they would chasing a, a 50, 50 puck. So that's a big deal, you know, get them in a position maybe where they have to step to the middle and then jump onto the box or, you know, something where there's a reaction time associated mm-hmm. with it, which is huge. But yeah, other than that, it's, you know, don't go too heavy too early. You know, my biggest lifters stay, you know, they don't one rep max test very often. That's for sure. You know, they keep it low. Cool. Well, actually we're going to go to a break real quick. And when we come back, I got breaking news. I just saw it right now and I will go ahead and break it now. What do you got? Matty Bolesky just signed a five-year contract with Boston Bruins. Oh yeah. Was that your news? No, that's not good news. Was that your news? No, my news is. That's not good news as far as I'm concerned, but. Uh, Chris Connors just signed a two-year deal Philadelphia Flyers. <laughs> Mighty Mouse. Mighty Love Mouse. Love him. All right. So his wife just wrote me. So Excellent. It yeah. uh, just came up on the uh, TSN. So. Just came up. And they got Zach Vernon. We'll talk about it. Zach Vernon. We'll talk uh, about trades and whatnot when we get back from the break. Maddie, go ahead and put the stamp on a couple of envelopes. Pay those bills. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershad. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones 
the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. And we're back for the third period. Uh, as we said earlier, we are joined in studio by our guest, Dr. Gary Bowman. I kind of have to pause when I say that, but just because... Uh, I'm supposed to update stuff for the show during intermissions, and I haven't done it yet. I know, but we've been catching up. Talking I'm, about not, even hockey, I'm not even talking into a mic. Now I am. There you go. Welcome back to the party, <laughs> Thank Frank. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as we said, uh, Dr. Gary Bowman is in-house, uh, uh, strength and conditioning coach from the Iowa Wild. Uh, we're going to just uh, kind of catch up on what's happening today since today is the big free agent frenzy day. This week's been nuts with trades, with free agent signings. I know we just gave up the update about uh, Mr. Bolesky and Mr. Connor, but uh, it's kind of interesting how things happen with uh, what all the big-name free agent goalies right now, all spoken for. Are they all done? All Everyone's, spoken for. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of minor guys left, but that's about it. What about uh, Derek Hender? Is he uh, being that's offered what I any said. contracts? The mine, the, all the big guys are gone. Oh, oh. I'm still an unrestricted free agent. <laughs> they did not list me on the NHL site. So, uh, well, I, I heard I, Harry's bar down the streets looking for a goalie. <laughs> you know, the money's right. I know. That's what I'm thinking. Well, if you get free beer, you'd go. <laughs> yeah, we'll play for beer. Yeah, yeah. Exa exactly right. Molson's. <laughs> I did find one, a couple of these really uh, interesting. I just kind of blow through a few of them. Ottawa's keeping the Hamburger and Anderson. Anderson's getting long in the tooth. Hamburger was really unproven. He did have a great streak last year, but from a goaltender watching him, he has horrible form. You wonder how much longer he can carry that on. Uh, but they traded Robin Leonard off to Buffalo, which okay. uh, was pro I thought was probably their, one of their hotter prospects coming up. He was a young kid. Yes, young kid. Good uh, pedigree, so... Uh, Eddie Lack went to Carolina, so apparently Vancouver thinks that they've got it all taken care of with Ryan Miller, which uh, I don't get that either. No. Uh, Dude, he's like a skeleton. Oh, yeah. And Drew isn't that much bigger. And Drew, and when those two stand together, he Drew looks like he's like yeah. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. He looks like, he take, <laughs> I look looks like he's working out until he takes his shirt off. Yeah, yeah. Man, would you get shot with a cannonball like in your chest? doctor's working with him over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need Doc working, yeah. honestly. Cam Talbot gone to Cal gone to Edmonton. Who? Cam Talbot back oh. up for uh, the Rangers last year. Yeah, and he actually went fairly cheap. I think a third round pick or something, uh, which is kind of strange. Niami went with Dallas, uh, so that takes care of pretty much all the big name goalies that are available out there right now. Uh, one very interesting trade that your boy Ed Snyder, the GM of the Flyers, made out with. He traded Chris Pronger and Nick Grossman. I know. For Sam Gagne to Phoenix. Oh, sorry, Arizona. Or for Sam Gagne? Is that who we got? Yes, yes. Yes, I'm happy with that. Yeah, but uh, I was thinking, well. Grossman, I, I look, I worked with him for a while. Yep. Great kid. Yep. Uh, you bang on him a lot, he'll start turning. He's a big kid. There's no question about that. I, and I really liked him a lot. Yep. He was a really nice guy. Yep. But uh, you, you bang on him a lot, he turns it over. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's zero. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about I find about this is that, well, first off, Pronger is still on an NHL contract because Please. he has last played in 2011. He re medically retired with concussion syndrome symptoms, but because on the new CBA, I'm buffling. Yeah. <laughs> under the new CBA, since he signed his last contract over the age of 35, he has to get full value of the contract. So they cannot buy him out regardless of whatever, if it was a 50 year contract. One of the good things I got in the lockout. Uh, well, Pronger did. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did. But uh, the funny thing was, he got traded in the same week he was nominated. To, he was announced to be going into the Hall of Fame this fall. 
Is he really Hall of Fame? That's what they announced. He is in this year's class of Hall of Fame players. I bet you Edmonton's. Remember, didn't they like burn his house or they took stuff they, out of his well, house? He and went burn to the Stanley Cup final, and first thing he said, "Get me the hell out of here." Yeah, you know, but why? What do you remember? Uh, Coach? Yes, I do remember. He went to Anaheim because his wife was from Anaheim. There you go. So, uh, as Anaheim's I said a couple awesome. of weeks ago when I met it's him, an awesome place. Yeah, it is. As I said a couple of weeks ago when I met him, uh, anybody who ever tell you, you know that. He's not a very nice guy or a weenie or, you know, just generally a, a grump or whatever. They're 100% right. No, I know. 100% right. And, uh, you know, talking about strength and conditioning, um, he's a big guy, 6'6 ish or whatever, but he has uh, he has spindly little legs, looks like a six year old girl. So, uh, Sophia has. Hot. Uh, <laughs> so, your daughter Sophia has uh, better defined calves than he has. So, there you go. I heard a rumor. I'm just going to throw this rumor. I All heard right. a rumor, but I think it's true. That like he used to have like his own personal like massage people coming in the locker room all the time and I don't doubt it. Yeah, Gretzky used to have his own uh, chiropodist that used to follow him. You know around. It's so Canadian. It's so Canadian. I'm just kidding. Well, it could be. I mean, <laughs> kind know. of day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and ride on there. So uh, a couple other interesting. So like we said, Pronger. The interesting also about that. No, wait, wait, that, wait, 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 Doc. Where are you from? I grew up Central Wyoming. Central Wyoming. Yeah. Sorry. I, I played Junior St. Louis though when Pronger was there and. Uh, he he would be in our locker room before the game. Our coach was a chiropractor who focused on some soft tissue. Prong was in there almost every day getting worked on. Same. Wow. He backed up my rumor. Wow, that's your rumor? Wow. Yeah, it's, private. it's been second. <laughs> I mean, that's actually, I mean, not to totally steal the conversation, no, but no, no, I walked in the locker room it. before practice. I was like, wow, I could make a living doing, you know, like, because I knew I wasn't going to the NHL, obviously, you know, so <laughs> like, holy cow, I could be in the game and, you know, mm -hmm. be on the medical side. I mean, that was the first glimpse I got of maybe – you know, wow. focusing or altering the career a little bit. Chris so Pronger. Pronger started that for you. Chris Pronger, yeah. Wow. wow. All right, well, we'll take it away. Maybe he's not entirely terrible, but at least actually, he didn't do it on purpose. All right, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, he didn't say hi, though. No, just kidding. Interesting <laughs> thing, though, because they traded yeah, Pronger, who could not be bought out, mm -hmm. Arizona has so much room to get up to the cap floor. Believe it or not, there are actually teams that have to need to get to the cap floor. They needed his contract to bring them up to the cap floor. And if Gagne was to be bought out, he wouldn't cost them anything or very much because he's not making a heck of a lot of money. So they traded a, a serviceable player for it and a defenseman for a contract that brings him up to the salary floor for a guy who'll never play with him. And now when I talked about this trade earlier, and I talked about it last week or a couple days ago to you, you were shot, and I was mad about it when I said they traded Zach Ronaldo away yes. to the Bruins, who's our hated rival, who's always brutal games, yep. brawls. And now we trade like our toughest guy who, I mean, really the kid was a pretty yep. tough kid, yep. small, but he was tough. And well, and now, now we have to watch our backs when it comes to town. I mean, really, I don't know why. I don't know. You know, and the funny thing, I think that was to replace the Lucic factor. They traded Lucic away to LA, mm -hmm. which gives That's even more sandpaper brutal. to an oh. LA team. Uh, but uh, you look at what Boston did recently. Soderberg gone. They let him go. Columbus signed him, snatched him up. Uh, Lucic gone to LA. You look at Dougie Hamilton, mm -hmm. who's probably got one of the most quintessential Canadian hockey names, Dougie Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. What, what the hell's wrong with Doug Hamilton? Mm -hmm. But anyways, Doug Hamil Dougie Hamilton. He probably has a Maple Leaf tattooed on him. No doubt. No mm -hmm. doubt. He played, did play for Team Canada. But uh, he's gone to Calgary. Calgary signed to a six-year contract. So obviously, he's a 22-year-old guy. He is, I thought he was going to be the backbone of a defensive core there. Um, then uh, they had Martin Jones, who's a very good goaltender as a yeah. backup. Because Rask got rung out a lot last year because there was no backup. And uh, they traded him back again. So he Jones was in uh, Boston, right, I think, for four days before he got sent back to San Jose. And I think uh, Brendan Mickelson. You remember him, Mickelson? Mm -hmm. He used to play here. I think he's going to be up mainly with the main club this year too. I really? mean, I think it's contract wise or whatever. Because I know uh, Gordonin was still coach is coaching their farm squad up there uh, for Calgary. Right or no Toronto. no Toronto Toronto Marley's. So I think that he um, he's trying to go over back to Calgary because that's where Mickelson mm -hmm. had some success over in Calgary, and I think he's trying to go back over him over to Calgary because he was on at the end of his contract. Your boy Richardson came up as a uh, as a Flyers draft pick at one point. Went to L.A. had his contract voided this week mm -hmm. for uh, apparently trying to go across the border with an unspecified amount of oxycodone that he could not speak to. So he's not been charged apparently, but because of the there's some morality clause in his contract. Players, but nothing up well, there. You know, remember the line from the movie Goon: <laughs> <laughs> One, don't touch my, touch my Percocet. Second, you got any Percocet? Right. So, 
Um, back in June, he hasn't been tr- he hasn't been uh, charged yet, but uh, apparently it's a violation of some morality clause clause in his contract. Oh, they, they, anyone that was going to take him, everyone knew what was going on in Philly. Yeah, I mean, you don't get rid of your captain a- after we had a great run in the playoffs. Yep, without there's something going on. Yep. So, so I know a lot of my friends who are Chicago fans are having the bipolar episode of going coming off a Stanley Cup win. And to find out that Brandon Saab was traded. Mm. And I think that was basically a salary dump. They picked up uh, Anisimov, who's the only biggest guy in that uh, trade, uh, which they did sign to an extension today. So, uh, honestly, that's salary dump, salary dump, salary dump. So uh, big stuff, free agents. Guy we talked a lot about who overperformed in the playoffs, Kari Ramo from yep. Calgary. Resigned with Calgary again for only one year. Didn't find out. He's a sixth round pick. Talk about a guy who's come a long way. Yeah. How much? When we had Bolesky on last week, he said as a fourth rounder, he's got a 20% chance of making uh, playing a game in the NHL. What the hell chances do you think a sixth round? A sixth round, yeah. So uh, I don't really believe it was for a lot of bank, but I'm thinking he thinks if he can get another year out like he did last year, he'll be a UFA again that will qualify him for a bigger offer. So uh, Mikey Ribeiro's. Big deal. How how old is he? You know, I mean, he's got to be. Kari Ramo? No, Mikey. Uh, Ribeiro? Ribeiro? Oh, my gosh. I mean, he's played for Dallas forever, right? He played. He came with Montreal. I remember that. Wow. And the worst diving BS I've ever seen came from him against Boston. So, uh, Boshaman went to Colorado. Uh, let's see. Michael Froelich went with the Flames. Flames made a couple of big moves. They got uh, Froelich. They, they need something to do in Calgary. Well, you know, <laughs> I know there's a couple of friends of mine that are Calgary fans, so mm-hmm. they're probably listening. So, uh, Paul Martin signed with the Sharks. Okay. No, the Sharks got a really scary decor. Uh, Mike Green went to the Wings. Brad Richards, fresh off his cup win with Chicago, mm-hmm. is signed with the Wings as well. That just came up before the show. Wow. And the one the Wings that, always do it. The Wings always pull pull it together. Yep. Yep. Uh, and of course, the one that everybody's talking about is. Kessel it came out today. Phil Kessel got traded from the Toronto Maple Leafs to uh, – he went to the Penguins. Yeah. Basically, if you read this on its face, the way I read it, Toronto got a couple of pros- a couple of minor leaguers and two picks. So basically it was a salary dump, and they got rid of him. I mean, that's there's no other way to re- that I read that. And, I mean, I was hearing that earlier in the yeah. year that they were done. They were just kind of tired, you know. There's a couple of interesting facts uh, if you're Phil Kessel to read into this. The reason they waited an extra day for the, to announce the trade is because he was due a $4 million uh, bonus. I don't know what for. I'm sure it was for, for goals off of last year. I'm sure uh, it wasn't his plus minus. He did a lot minus. of community events. Yes, I'm sure it wasn't for his plus minus last year because he won the green jacket. Yeah, if any of these guys ever listen to this, you're still getting beat up. Okay. Yeah, well, Phil Castle can come on. The Pil- <laughs> yeah. He's like the Pillsbury Doughboy. He's cut like a, wow. milk-, he's cut <laughs> like a milk bag. Are you kidding me? Uh, let me text somebody right now. <laughs> Besides, I'm calling muscles over here, you know. <laughs> That's the reason I, I I couldn't get changed next to Gary in the locker room. I mean, he shows everybody up, you know. He's got that washing machine, uh, wash mm. washboard. I've got the washing machine here, so you know, wow. big difference. What do they say? You don't go with skinny cook, right? So exactly. Right. Never trust that's a skinny right. cook. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, don't don't trust a, a fat uh, health guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. And I know one actually. He was, never mind. Okay. Never mind. Okay. I don't, I don't say nothing. So they're picking up the tab. They paid $4 million for his bonus. They're picking up 15% of the remainder of his contract. How does Pittsburgh have this money? No, Toronto was paying this to get rid of him. Oh, the pain oh. Of So Toronto, oh. this, there you go, Kessel. Read into this. Toronto so badly wanted to get rid of you. They're paying, what, this year, almost $6 million this year and a million and a half for the remainder of your contract, never to come back. Wow. Toronto is spending over $20 million this year for players that they are paying not to play for them. You know, even when you have players that are friends of yours and they know they can talk candidly sometimes, they still do like they're like talking to the media. Because mm-hmm. I got a chance to talk to Lupo one time. We were talking about him. He was like, oh, he's best. He's the greatest. I can't. I love that. You know, and it's, I don't think he liked to have him on the line. Get out of here. You know what I mean? It can, I mean, it just, yeah. A lot of missed opportunities when you watch a lot of those games. I mean, Toronto had really talent-wise. You would think they looked decent. Yep. They looked really decent. And then they would come in and... On paper. I mean, even the Flyers, I think, have a winning record against them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And that's... We only beat Pittsburgh and them. I think that's all victory we got. Hey, looking at the clock. We're running past. We're going to go ahead and pay some bills. Matty, go ahead and pay a few. Are you dilated anymore, Matty? I hope not. All right, girl. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, I'm J. Michael McCoy, and about 20 years ago, I went to a used car salesman by the name of John Hewitt. He had a little shop over there on North 2nd Avenue called John's Auto Sales, and I bought a car. I found that experience to be one that I had never had before from a used car salesman. He was honest, he was dependable, he had integrity, and he did what he said he was going to do. Well, over the years, between my kids and grandkids, I purchased seven vehicles from John's Auto Sales. And last month, I asked him to be a sponsor. I can tell you about their huge selection. I can tell you about their years of experience. I can tell you about their honest integrity. But all I really need to tell you is that I bought seven cars, and you can trust them. John's Auto Sales, 5435 2nd Avenue, Des Moines. You need a good ride when you hit the trail. Trust the man with the cars, and he goes by the name of Big John. Big John. And we're back again for overtime. So we're actually we're gonna lead right into this what we were talking about off Go ahead, the air. Do it. See, we don't take breaks. We don't, there's no off no season. There's no commercial no breaks even for us. So you ever say so, there's no off season. There's a t shirt coming with that. But there is gonna be hockey in Well, the NHL announced so. the plans to accept op- uh, offers for or proposals for expansion team, potential expansion teams. They have not outlined the process for how that is going to roll forth, but they've given a window, uh, and also the I think you have to put up fifty million bucks as well to uh, be considered as a potential. So Vegas, is this we talk FIFA? About Vegas. Is this FIFA? No kidding, no kidding. <laughs> well, it depends where fifty million bucks goes. Um, we did talk about Vegas. All the talk that's been about Vegas actually came out today in New York Post that Arizona is moving to Vegas. It's done deal. Of course, yeah. the NHL. Came I tweeted out. it out. Yeah, I'm the sorry. NHL came out right away and said. Absolutely not. We're furious about this. And I saw it on Facebook. And you know, underneath, I'll show you relevant articles. Well, I found when we scroll across, they had the exact same thing when they said that uh, Atlanta was moving to Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely not. Batman came out and said, no way, it's not happening. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. We're staying loyal. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, Vegas is in the works. Pers- my personal take on it is that, you know, I don't think a league probably wants to have any kind of affiliation with any kind of gambling uh system or potential implications of corruption or any of that kind of stuff. But they Although say we have a team in Washington, so what can we say? Hockey, right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, hockey is the hardest sport to, to bet on. Did you ever yeah. hear this? Because of the empty net at the end. Yeah. Like that's, it's so hard to predict. Over under, throw, it gets thrown throw, out the window. It throws it out because of this empty net. Like, yep. you know, gamblers are like, why put yep. a goalie? I need to stay in there. <laughs> Quebec City, strong. They get the, the rinks being built right now. They have ownership group, uh, so you know, and they have obviously strong history. They didn't leave because they weren't drawing. No, oh, yeah, what did they? They went for? to Colorado because they had a much better offer to go there. Honestly, the and ownership they won the Stanley Cup. What there. two years later? Nineteen ninety six, and oddly enough, someone actually plotted it out. It's uh, between La Colise in Quebec City and the Pepsi Center in Denver. It's exactly nineteen hundred ninety six miles. Wow, karma! You know what's funny is that that whole. Um, that whole team there, and the Avalanche team, was all built off of a trade with Lindros. Lindros. Yeah, Forsberg went there. Uh, Sackick was part mm-hmm. was a part of that trade. He was the guy who wore the eighty eight actually for that uh, Quebec franchise. Sackick when yeah. he first came up. Uh, I still have good memories of Lindros, though. I mean, everyone talks about. I have good memories. I remember uh, playing for Team Canada, but when he was uh, as a holdout, and he was just a wrecking ball. I remember he almost killed some guy on the French national team. Literally <laughs> ran along the boards and hit him right into the stanchion. I thought you know, his. Hand, I think his ribs touched when he uh, went into the. Yeah. Balls, but uh, Hamilton, you got to think they're in the running somewhere along the way. You think Hamilton. I think Hamilton's got a rink. It doesn't have enough luxury boxes at this point, but the rink is being rebuilt. They just lost their AHL team. They, oh, they did. I, I they, did. they moved to uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. The a Hampton bunch Bulldogs. Of them moving out west now, right? Yeah. So now we're all over the place here now for the American Hockey League. Uh, just north of Toronto, in uh, I believe it's Markham, they're uh, building a new rink, which is NHL sized. 
Uh, the whole market size of Toronto. Kansas you know, City has a rink. Kansas City has a rink. They're on my list here because they they play a preseason game there every year. I remember they tried to steal the Penguins. Yes, yes. But Kansas City hockey's never worked at any level for any sustained amount of time. Um, I think a big thing about Hamilton or uh, Markham when you think you know Toronto kicks up a stink saying that you know this is our market and you know the, it'll impair impinge our market. Forbes said that Toronto is the number one ranked uh, valued NHL. Uh, franchise, no question. Which uh, you know, I have, I believe that firmly. Over to Montreal. Over Montreal. Yes, when you look at the total value of the franchise, yeah, it's probably the top valued franchise, hmm. despite the fact they haven't won squad. But anyways, Philly's got to be up there too, right? I know. I mean, I really, I'm not saying as, it's as, as far as the post uh, original six, I probably agree with you. Yeah. Um, oh, the thing no, is that the original six. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Toronto, why Toronto does not have a second team in that area in that market? It's like, you know, I mean, they do have an AHL. We have team. two, we have three teams in the New York City area, you know, and but yet Toronto, which is comparable size, has one. And they're saying, are you counting no, New Jersey is in the New York New okay. Jersey's within that. Okay. I mean, they are a little bit. They're up in North yep. Jersey. Yeah. Yep. LA has two. Not exactly a hot butt hockey, but both teams have won Stanley Cups. Yeah. But, <laughs> sorry, Toronto. Uh, so maybe, you know, is the Toronto area a good, a good choice? You know, well, I've been to a lot of games at the Honda Center, and there's always a lot of opposing play, team yep. fans there. Yep. Always at the Honda. I think people take vacations. Well, same they, thing, go to Florida or Tampa, same thing. Uh, Waterloo, Ontario, not Iowa, sorry. Uh, I don't think they'll get it. Jim Ball Silly, the guy, the Blackberry guy, he was the guy that tried to uh, steal a team when, uh, I believe it was Atlanta, he tried to buy out from underneath. He has more money than God, but... Um, it, the NHL didn't like the way he did it, so he. Do you think uh, he wants to sponsor a hockey radio show? I think it'd be fantastic. We can uh, say by BlackBerry. I don't I care. That. I'll sell my iPhone for that. A couple others in the in the works: Seattle, Portland. Yeah, maybe. Are they great sports markets? Ish. What's that Are, Seattle team they have? That uh, C, not Seahawks. It's a uh, bird. It's Thunderbirds. Bird. Is that what it's called? Yep. The Thunderbirds. Yep. Western Hockey League. Yeah, WHL. Is it okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they do pretty good though, right? Yeah, but you got to wonder: Are they a good hockey market? It's probably you know that size is probably right size for that. I mean, it's um, south of Vancouver. I don't see why. Kansas wouldn't. City, dark horse in the ro- in the race. Houston, you got to think it's got to be in there somewhere. Dallas has done a lot to drive hockey in the south. Houston had a long-standing history with the Arrows playing yeah. there for years. They played in the IHL, played in the American yeah, League before they good, moved here. Real good uh, crowd there, right? Yeah, they had good support when they were there. Uh, like I said, they moved the team here because Minnesota relocated the team. It wasn't a matter they weren't drawing well or uh, didn't perform well. So. How that's going to happen? It's I heard hard it just to, to be with Slagle Sports. Oh my I'm just god! Just oh my kidding. god! Do you remember Slagle Sports and all that? That's mm-hmm. who I used to work for here, and it was they owned the franchise of the Ducks yep. and the Stars. And I, I think the biggest thing about when you're looking at expansion, the big thing you have to look at is how everything's going to align. It's going to have to be two Western teams because right now the Eastern Conference has more teams than the West. And, and Detroit's over there. What Detroit's now, huh? in the East now, and so is Columbus. And so they're right there on the cusp. The problem you're starting to get into there is like, okay, if you put two East, an Eastern co- East Coast and a West Coast, who are you going to move to the West to try to balance things out? You're not going to have three more teams in the East than you would the West. So you can't move one of those guys unless you're going to balance out the numbers there. So mm-hmm. I think that's going to be the problem. Biggest problem I have with this, all this expansion crap we're talking about, we still have teams in this league that are not doing anything. They've still not made a cent. Columbus Blue Jackets have not turned a nickel in profit since they were uh, – since they were founded, Doug Armstrong was on Sportsnet a while ago. Said when he was the GM there, it takes about ninety ninety million dollars all in to run a hockey NHL hockey team. Absolutely huge overhead. Yep, huge First, overhead. In everything NHL. hockey yeah, operations, everything all done. Re, uh, lease on the rink, transportation, everything. They need to bring in the closest marketing he ever guys. got the whole time he was there. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Closest he ever got was seventy five million in uh, his tenure there. So this team's yet to turn nickel. Columbus is a big college town, though, too, right? I yeah, think that's what that's that, that is. Their yeah. that's their college battle. football's huge, center. and it's the same thing that the, we, the Wild and the yep. Stars and it's, it's, we kind of deal with that uh, college yep. more college sports in there. Yep. Thank you, Keith. I don't, Murphy. I don't watch it. Yeah, I know. Arizona, once again, bleeding money, bleeding mm-hmm. money. Moved from Winnipeg out into the middle of the desert where no one gives a damn about hockey, but yet they're going to stand by their guns and do that. And, I went uh, to a game there, sold out game, game one against the Red Wings, and they won. Uh, the Coyotes won that game. Really? So eventually, Detroit came back and killed them in it. But um, it was a great, great little venue. You ever been down there, Doc? I've been there. I have not been to the rink. So I've only been to Arizona a couple of times. Well, you may have to hurry. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, are they the same right now, like this year? I mean, because you can't say a team is moving and then have them stay one more year. No one's going to go. Well, when you look Your at season all the stuff tickets that's go going on with this lawsuit right now between the city trying to cancel their lease 
And the injunction they're trying to put in, you, you're pretty sure that's not doing much for season ticket sales. No, no. You Imagine know. being a salesperson there. Exactly. Uh, uh, they must have a pre. A I went through this. Them. I know what it's. I, mean, yes. I was never a sales guy. I was the marketing guy. But I see my sales guys like. Basically well, if we have a team next year, can we count on your support? <laughs> <laughs> And then, and, and our, you know, the crazy GMs are like, tell them we promise, you know, just like this, you know, the news clippings, you know, the, the NHL says they're not going nowhere. Yep. I had a couple of things. I want to just go on go real quick here. Um, oh, yeah. AAA Wild are having tryouts on August 1st at Metro. Go on their website to check that out. Lorstom Clinic will be back 29th through the 30th. DMYHA.org will be where you can go to sign up. Champions, 27th through the 31st of July. Great camp. Marty Wolf will be in town. I'd like to get him on the air for that. Yeah. Marty Bring Marty, Marty be good for it. Or Krause. And uh, actually, one question I had for you, Gary. We've been asking a lot of our guests. If you had to change one rule, someone made you king, what rule would they, would you change? Man, I think Torch set the bar pretty high with his answer. I know. We had, didn't expect that one at all. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a good one. You know, I think... I don't know. I like the way the overtime has gone. So I think I would I would try to maybe add a little bit more to it. Not a full another period, but I think we bailed to the shootout a little too early. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the solution mm -hmm. is, but I'd like to see maybe a little bit more hockey before we bail to the shootout. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, and you think the players feel this way too, right? I mean, I and I'm not so, saying you're speaking yeah. for them, but what you think. I yeah. think I think as, in, as a player, you know... The shootout's great and all, but it, you're, it's hard pressed to go into the locker room, you know, and celebrate a win on a shootout, and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a tough way to go in when you three on you've three lost. is a lot of open ice. And I'm going to tell you, creativity. we got some great players in the league right now that can really exploit. It's that. exciting. Yes. It's yeah. exciting. Yes. You want to end it with a really. gimmick, or do you want to end it with a skills competition, or you want to end it with bringing a, more of those scoring hockey. defensemen yeah. that are going to have you yeah. know with a little bit. Look of for guys like Carlson to love that stuff. Shea Weber to love that kind of stuff. PK Subban will love that kind of stuff. Because if anyone, if I was playing pro, and anyone does that between the legs thing that my son does to goalies, where he yeah. does that puck between the legs and then this, the, next game, you're getting it. <laughs> now, as soon as that puck drops, I'm socking you in the face. <laughs> All right, I got uh, last things to talk about is uh, State Wars is coming up. State Wars is a huge, uh, I mean, there are a lot of pro players will be there, a lot of pro players that have played in State Wars. It's a roller hockey tournament this year. It's in St. Louis. This will be our third year attending. We've always done pretty well. We actually won bronze in AAA there last year. So we had that going on. And then um, Narch. Narch is the, the biggest North tournament. North American World, World and Championship. So, and uh, that's what Anthony, uh, we have a, the whole group of Des Moines kids going, but we didn't have enough 12 U players. So Anthony got uh, drafted by St. Louis. Louis team. And uh, so I can't wait. I'm going to go down. No coaching for me. I'm going to sit wow. and watch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be sitting with my ear next to It's going to be a change. No, I know. It will be a change. It's going to be actually be a good change. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. Uh, tired of coaching my kid he's a brat <laughs> <laughs> much love <laughs> much love hey uh special thanks to our guest yes, dr thanks. bowman thanks yes, for having me and actually uh, it's probably not a bad idea i'd like to even talk to him about doing a semi-regular ask ask the doctor ask the doctor ask the doctor happy to do it gentlemen happy to do it he yes could, he could be dr feel instead of dr phil i guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all day i've only been with her twice no i'm just kidding all right maddie get us out, out of here. get out in trouble get us out of here